she's now talking to Mvula, who's completely disinterested in her, but she keeps chuffing at him and kind of snorting at him. There we go. And he's not interested at all. He's now lying in the shade quite far away from where she is. See? She's just contact calling him. And every now and then you'll hear a little grumble from him as he sits in the distance there and kind of warns her that that's my kill. You will not go anywhere near it. I don't think she's going to be able to get anywhere near him. Oh, big yawn as well. I wonder where she's going to go. I think she's going to have to try and find herself some shade. I don't think she's going to be allowed to get anywhere near that carcass by Mvula. While he's being tolerant of her, if he tries, she tries to get close, he'll chase her. Just not because he's threatened by her in any way, but, well, his food is up there now, and he wants that all to himself. He doesn't want to share that with Shongile. And she's trying to make these chuffing sounds in a way of kind of telling him that I'm not a threat. Can I please just come a little bit closer and get some food? And she'll be used to when she did this with Karula. She would come down the tree and let her little cub go up, no problem. But a big male leopard like this is not going to tolerate that at all, and he's not going to allow her anywhere near it. But you can't blame her for trying. Hello, my girl. Look at her sniffing the air. Oh, a little head shake. Oh, she's so beautiful. So Kobe, age 15, you want to know what the chuffing sounds like? Well, it just sounds like a really quick breath that she's kind of taking. And she's doing it every now and then, so I'm not sure if you can pick it up on the mics, but I'll try to keep quiet so you can. Of course, now she won't do it. We'll just sit quietly for a bit until she does do it. There we go. You see? It's like a it's just a sort of huffing breath. So it's like a <laughs> So that's the kind of sound she'll make when she chops and moms do it when they call their cubs, they'll make that same sound. And each little leopard will have a sort of individual way of doing it and the cubs will then recognise that as well as the adult males now. Mvulo is flat sleeping, but the squirrels have woken him up again. I walk in the rain, you're wondering if she could be calling for her brother. No, not at all. What she's doing is she's trying to communicate to the Mvula that she's not a threat, and she wants to be able to try and get towards that carcass. So she's making the sound as a sort of submissive display to him that she's interested in him and wants to come closer. But when he growls, that's an indication back to him, that and back to her, that she mustn't come any closer. If she, if he started to chuff back the same as what she's doing, then she would know that she can approach and get closer. But when he growls like that, that's basically him saying to her, "No chance, you can't come any closer." And you can see him just in the distance here. I don't know if you can see him, Seb. Mm -hmm. um, so if I point him out, he's just in there somewhere. So we should go a little bit tighter. Should be able to see him. There you go. You can just see his muzzle in amongst the leaves. So he's not too far away. And you can see he's listening to Shongila, but when she gets a little bit closer or she moves, then he'll just growl a little bit and have something to say. And there we go. She's now lying back down again and decided, well, this is where I'm going to rest. But look on her chest there. You see she's got blood on her chest. So that kill is definitely hers. And that would have been when she was up feeding. And unfortunately, it's now been stolen away from her by this big monstrous male that is Mvula. And that's unfortunately the way it's going to go, Shongile. You're going to have to learn this lesson because it's going to happen to you many times. I've seen many different females robbed of their kills by big males. And so it just happens like that. And you'll find some females are pretty kind of resilient against it and they'll sit for long periods of time waiting for the male to eat and then hoping that bits will drop down for them they never really get anywhere i've seen salesh with anderson do it many times here she just sits and waits and well it just never really works out for her because anderson's a glutton and just eats everything um, 
but she does try and sort of wait. Other females that I've seen, they just sort of see the male get up in the tree and they walk off. They're not interested in trying to wait because they know what's good, the outcome of that's going to be. So these will be valuable lessons for Shongila as she grows up as how to deal with another male leopard, how to deal with her carcass being stolen. And this is all going to sort of be good for her in the long run. And as she sort of grows up and becomes this bigger female and, and becomes a territorial female, these will be vital lessons that she's learned. So really good to see that she's been able to handle herself around Mvula because Mvula would have been one of the biggest threats to her as a young individual because well even though he's a male and she's a female she's not in any way old enough to mate with and he Mvula will know that and so he doesn't know that Karula's potentially gone and he'll try and kill that cub to bring the females back into heat if there is a female around here so even though he's a sort of nomadic male the chance to mate if he can take it he'll still do so as we know because he mated with Shaluva last year um, he'll still try and mate with females if they are around so she's kind of passed her first major test as a lonely female that as far as we know because Tingana we think is her father and she spent a lot of time around Tingana with Karula whereas Mvula would be an unknown entity for her and one that she's managed to kind of now negotiate which is going to only lead to better things and more experienced females so she's done well to sort of make sure that she hasn't been in any way hurt by him yet obviously there's still could potentially be a problem if she gets brave enough to try and go to that carcass she might get hurt but I don't think she will I think she'll know that as while he's there she's just gonna have to be patient and bide her time and curl up into a tight little ball like she has now Mvula on the other hand has gone completely flat all I see is a little white tummy sticking out of the bush he's fast 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 asleep now and it's been, like I say been an eventful 24 hours for Mvula from finding dead hyenas to finding this and probably having some sort of interaction with Shongile it's all been happening so Shansan you say you once remember Mvula sharing a meal with Sindile well that's true he did share a meal with Sindile I remember Brent telling me about it but I've also seen him share a meal with Shivambalana I've seen him share a meal with um, Mishu, Induna, um, who else did I see him share a meal with? Uh, just another squirrel that started to alarm call and it's made Mvula sit up as well because it's a squirrel that's alarm calling from a different direction now. Pretty sure it's seeing him because it's just on our right hand side here. But you can see Shangile also popped up and Mvula popped up and they probably both got to be quite aware of any other leopard. We know that last night Taylor saw not too far from here a skittish female leopard or what she thought was a female leopard. So maybe Inchila could be hanging around or another leopard could be in this area and with all the squirrels alarm calling that will often occur tracked other leopards and so both of them are going to have to be quite aware of what's going on wouldn't it be quite something if little tumba rocked up into this whole sighting as well because that would certainly put a spanner in the works as to what goes on and we know that shangila and tumba have spent time together but i don't think mvula has ever seen tumba and it would be interesting to judge his reaction to tumba but like we were saying now i've seen him sharing kills with lots of different young males and in no way aggressive whatsoever i remember the one time he shared his meal with um, Torchwood male. So Torchwood came from Inkanyeni and we thought was actually not fathered by Mvula. It could have been obviously because we don't know what happens sometimes but as far as I, we knew it wasn't fathered by Mvula and yet he shared a meal where Mvula actually lay on the ground and Torchwood fed in the tree and came down and then Mvula went up into the tree as well. So really quite interesting to watch but both these leopards now are very alert. Since the squirrel started there's another leopard. There's another leopard. See here on the right? Yeah. So we've got three leopards now. I thought there might be another one. It's just sneaking in this thicket here. Yeah, I saw the tip of the tail. I wonder who this is now that's arrived. So the drama continues. This is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Only in the Sabi Sands can you see something like this. It's where moved to the left. Now. It's, it's moved to the left. Yeah. I don't want to move in case it's a skittish leopard and it runs away. I want to try and see how this plays out. But Mvula is very, very alert. Which way has it gone? This way, sir? Yes, yes. Okay, let's just see. Maybe it's going to come in front here. It'll be interesting to see what happens. But Shungile is completely unaware of what's going on. She's not really too phased, but Mvula has definitely seen something. But like I say, if it's a skittish leopard, I don't want to move too much in case that leopard then runs away. Let's let it play out and see what happens. But there's definitely a third leopard that's arrived here now. 
Isn't this cool? <laughs> what an epic, epic way to spend the day. High five, Sam. That's a awesome. Right. Wonder where she's gone now. I thought there might be another one because like I said, the squirrel on my right hand side just started all of a sudden and that squirrel had been quiet, but you can see the two squirrels are now alarm calling heavily. Look how their tails go up and down. And so we'll use them to find leopards. And the only reason we actually came up to this spot was because we heard a squirrel's alarm calling and well, just as well we did because it's now turning out to be in the most ridiculous morning. Um, I don't know how we're going to get anywhere near to where this other leopard could be. Um, Seb, let's try though. Let's just see if we can't just reposition slightly. I also want to move for another reason is that Shungile is on my left and she can't see anything from where she is. So if there is another leopard here, I don't want her to get caught unawares. I just want to move myself from where that leopard would be and make sure that Shungile has got a clear field of view that if it is another leopard that could potentially be dangerous to her, that she's able to then sort of see the danger coming and not have to worry too much. Now hopefully this other leopard, if it is a skittish leopard, is going to be so preoccupied with all the other sort of activity going around. Just careful there, Seb, are you alright? Okay, Seb, you're just going to have to guide me. Are we good? We're good? Cool. So we have to just watch our aerial at the back, which I... There it is there. Straight through, Seb. You see it, yeah? It looks like a female. I can't see exactly who it is, but straight through so this fall this bending tree um over there somewhere so just to my finger so you should see her in there just to your left a little bit there okay, there yeah, okay. so i can't see exactly who it is just yet is it hosanna it looks like it could be hosanna so we threw it into the cosmic universe, but it looks like it might be him. I mean, there's a tree that's right across his face at the moment, but it does look a little bit like him. For those of you that want to hazard a guess, maybe hashtag Safari Live, who you think this is. Difficult when it's just like that, but it looks like it might be Hosanna. And this is going to be interesting to see Mvula's reaction. So we've got Shungile on our left-hand side, Mvula just to the left, and then this other leopard straight in front. There we go. Who are you now? So there we go. Three leopards. Isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> <laughs> it is so cool. And look how it's just sneaking through the bush there. Awesome. I can't... I, to be fair, I really don't know who it is. Maybe when it comes out into the bush... Here we go. This is going to be our best bet in terms of an ID. No, still can't see it nicely. I thought it was going to come right out into the open, but it doesn't look like it's... Mobile <laughs> Paddy, you saying three leopards is causing, will cause squirrels to lose their minds. Well, most definitely these squirrels are very upset by the fact that there's three different leopards in this area. And so I'm sure they just don't know where they're coming from. And the more they call like this, there is every likelihood that maybe even Tingana can rock up in this whole situation. Because, well, if he hears this and he's anywhere nearby, he's definitely going to kind of come and investigate what's going on. Now, I wonder where this other leopard's gone. So some of you are saying Hosanna and some of you are saying Tandi. Well, I'm not sure. Like I said, difficult to see. If it was Tandi, I don't know, it just doesn't look like her to me, but it could be. I mean, I could be horribly wrong here, but it doesn't look like her to me. Now I'm going to just try and negotiate this. No, we're not going to get over there, unfortunately. I thought we'd be able to just ride over that, but we're not going to. There's Mvula on my left-hand side. I still can't see where this other leopard has disappeared to now, but Mvula's there. So I'm sure the other one hasn't slinked off too far. Um, I'm just trying to see a way through here, but there isn't a way through here, unfortunately. We're going to just have to try and be patient and wait and see where 
this leopard goes. But this leopard and Mvula would have definitely seen each other, and well, you can see he's not too perturbed. And it's probably because of the size of this leopard. This leopard is not very big, and so he knows that he's the biggest leopard amongst all three, and therefore he doesn't have to stress too much about this other leopard that's in this area. Seb, did you see where she went, or he went? I don't know. Looks like uh, he or she went like this. To the uh, left, yeah. Okay. okay. I'm gonna try and see if I can't find this other leopard so we can just get an sort of idea as to who it is. I'm just gonna make a little noise here, unfortunately, as we try to go over this section. Sorry, Wendy. So you can hear poor Wendy is just getting a little underbelly scratch from one of the knob thorns. Now where, oh where is this leopard? Now considering that it's quite dense and thick, it's actually quite difficult sometimes to spot them. But this leopard didn't seem too perturbed by our presence. So I'm hoping that it's just laid down somewhere here and I'll be able to find it again. Somewhere here, Seb, I would imagine. Oh no, I don't see now where it's gone. I lost sight of it as it kind of went behind this thicket. So I'm not sure where it is at the moment. I think we'll just have to go back and just be patient. Right, I'm just going to quickly just check here to see if there's any sign. No, nothing here. So while we try and see if we can't find this other leopard and see who this is and where they've gone, let's go back to Taylor, who seems to have had, well, a tough morning when it comes to the lions. They've given her a bit of a runaround.